It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Russians are headed to the polls for a presidential election on Sunday. According to the polls, the incumbent, Vladimir Putin, is expected to sweep into power, guaranteeing him the presidency for a third term. With the escalating row with the UK over the use of nerve gas on a former double agent, to the expulsion of diplomats, to rumors of a cyber warfare, things are getting heated. Why is all this taking place and what are its implications for the upcoming presidential elections in Russia? And then you have the domestic situation. What are the economic conditions people are facing just before these Russian polls? And what effect is that having on the elections? Adding to all of this, one of the looming issues is how many Russians will abstain or boycott the vote. One of Putin's opponents, Alexei Navalny, has been disqualified from running in this election, and he is calling for a boycott. State authorities Authorities are doing everything to make sure that the turnout does not fall below participation levels in the last presidential election. Now joining me to discuss Russian presidential elections is Alexander Buzgalin. He's a professor of political economy at Moscow State University. He's also the editor of the independent democratic left magazine, Alternatives. He is the coordinator of the Russian social movement, Alternatives, and the author of more than 20 books. Thanks for joining me today, Alexander. Nice to be with you, and it's really very important to discuss questions of Russian situation now before elections. Alexander, let's start with the escalating situation with the UK and the West. Uh, the Security Council meeting that took place about two days ago, the Russian ambassador to the UN uh, was seriously calling on the West for escalating the situation when there is no evidence of the fact that Russians used any nerve gas against this double agent uh, or former double agent in the UK. Now, I guess the question is, Alexander, why is this happening, all of this happening now? Well, first of all, I don't have any secret information. I'm not chief of KGB. I'm not agent of Mi-6 uh, from Britain. So I do not have any specific, uh, let's say, comments. But uh, as a professor, I can say uh, now it's very profitable. And the paradox is that it is profitable for both sides to escalate any tension between West and Russia, Western elite and Russian elite. Why? Uh, the answer is relatively simple. For the Western leaders, NATO countries' leaders, it is profitable to create the image of Russia as enemy who can use uh, nerve gas or something else against civilized Western countries uh, and create the image of the enemy because now situation in the main uh, say main countries of Europe is not very stable and it's very useful at such period to uh, create image of the enemy from outside. Uh, Russia can be used and this is more or less now tradition to use Russia as terrible example of terrible behavior of terrible agents uh, if it is possible and if it is impossible it doesn't matter. Uh, there is very well known proverb, you must tell lie, lie and again lie and maybe something will be finally uh, among people as commonplace. Uh, the same now, maybe it was used something against uh, former secret agent and maybe it was nerve gas and maybe it was Russia. But finally, for majority, will be a very simple association. Russia used n uh, nerve gas against Britain. Uh, this is the result of propaganda, and such propaganda is typical example, well known from the beginning of 20th century, maybe even earlier. So uh, we have situation when Western attack on Russia uh, creates uh, even more support to Putin inside Russia, because the image is simple. It's not good idea to discuss questions of internal contradictions, economic, social inequality, and so on. We must be, we Russians must be consolidated because there is one common enemy, and this is NATO, and NATO is telling terrible things uh, against us. They attack us, 
and it's really true. Uh, so West creates um, image of Putin as the only protector and defender of Russia in the terrible situation. And uh, for victory of Putin, uh, Western media made more than any other channel in Russia. Alexander, you've been a critical opponent of Putin, largely because of the way in which he has managed the economy and social issues within uh, Russia. Uh, what are the conditions now leading up to an election, and will that have an implication uh, as people go to the polls? Well, first of all, I want to stress that uh, economic situation in Russia during the last years really was not good. It was stagnation. Only in 2017, we had very small growth, 1.5, maximum 2 percent, according to optimistic estimations of the result of the year. And we still have very high level of social differentiation, the same like in the United States, even a little higher. Uh, 16 times the difference between uh, the poorest 10 percent and the richest 10 percent of Russian population. And this is official statistic. Really, uh, I'm sure the differentiation is higher. We have more than 20 million people who has less than uh, 10,000 rubles per month income. And 10,000 rubles per month is uh, less than $200, according to our official um, cost of dollar and ruble in the market. So the situation is not really positive, and there are a lot of uh, negative features in other spheres. Uh, we had the big critique of policy of our leaders in education, in science, uh, in many aspects. Uh, situation in last month a uh, little bit in improved, and this is typical behavior of leaders before elections. Uh, some uh, specialists, employees in education, in healthcare. Uh, intelligence uh, received the additional wage as present from president. Uh, it was some promises that it will be better situation with pensions. A uh, little bit was increased uh, minimum uh, level of minimum wage and pensions. Uh, a few hundred rubles. This is less than uh, five dollars per month, something like that. Very small money, but it was big uh, wave of propaganda that we have increasing of minimum level of incomes and, and so on and so far. But generally speaking, people doesn't like uh, economic and social policy, which is realized in our country. But our mass media created image of uh, President Putin, who is a wonderful leader in the sphere of foreign policy. And uh, for internal economic policy, we do not have responsibility of president. This is government who is responsible for bad economic policy. In reality, of course, government is under the control of president, and uh, we have concentration of all main uh, sources of power in the hands of president in Russia, according to our constitution. But uh, propaganda creates image, good president, bad prime minister. And uh, many people believe that uh, the problem is not uh, Putin, but the problem is a bad government who cannot understand what wants a good president. This is the reality. All right, so what options uh, do people have? Now, I've said that Alexei Navalny has been barred from running in the election. He's calling for a boycott. Um, that's only one opponent and probably not the most serious opponent to President uh, Putin. Uh, so domestically, who else is running in the election that could pose a serious um, opposition, at least steer the, um, the country in a different direction by way of an opposition? So, first of all, I want to stress that uh, Davalny was not a serious opponent of Putin, and in Russia he was not popular. He was mainly created as an uh, enemy of president by uh, Western mass media and a few liberal sources of information in Russia. Uh, he doesn't have big support of population, and he has a very strange program where uh, you can find mixture of liberal ideas, ideas of Russian nationalism, uh, everything populistic uh, leader, more similar with Le Pen than with uh, democratic liberal alternative, as he is presented in the Western media. Uh, boycott is not uh, idea of Navalny himself. Uh, it is more or less commonplace for opposition. 
But uh, in reality, there is no boycott of elections, and without uh, rejection to participate in elections, or rejection from the biggest parties like Communist Party of Russian Federation and others, boycott is useless. And that's why I am not a big fan of this idea. Uh, there are problems that people will not come for the elections because nobody is, has real interest to the elections. It was no real um, opportunity for opposition to present the uh, program and to uh, show that uh, there is alternative to economic and social policy, which was realized during last years in our country. Uh, the only real candidate uh, who has a really alternative program is Pavel Grudinin. He is a businessman, but uh, mainly he is uh, presented as leader of collective enterprise in agricultural sphere with the uh, name uh, Lenin uh, Sovkhoz. Uh, uh, so and he represents party. what party, Alexander? He is a representative of Communist Party of Russian Federation and some other paternalistic forces who wants to have a strong Russian economy, uh, who wants to support uh, domestic business who wants to have Russia as a country with more social justice, uh, a little bit nationalistic, but not only. There are different people, and Grudin himself, I think, he is not even Russian. So that's why he is not nationalist. Uh, he is, uh, let's say, more or less uh, normal left social democrat as far as economic program is concerned and social program is concerned. And uh, he can have really big support. Uh, it was a lot of attempts to discreditize Grudinian. It was a lot of negative propaganda in main mass media in Russia, TV channels, radio, internet, papers, everywhere. He didn't have uh, really good opportunities for debates. By the way, Putin never participated in open debates with opponents. And uh, every day he is uh, many times in TV because he is uh, active president and uh, every opportunity to show how he is helping to people, how he is good in this on that uh, aspect uh, every time in TV, in radio, everywhere. Putin, Putin and again Putin. Not the same for opposition. For opposition it was chance to have debates, but it was six persons who had two minutes each on TV and uh, mainly they were debating between themselves, so it was just show, useless show, unfortunately. Uh, electoral campaign, generally speaking, is more game than real serious political competition of different programs. Now, um, are there any candidates that are running in this presidential election that you would support, Alexander? So, uh, the problem is not to support personality, the problem is to support program. Uh, if we compare programs, I think program of Grudinian is uh, the best. As I said, uh, it is a combination of well-known slogans uh, which are important, uh, realization of which is very important for Russia. Uh, strategic planning and strong industrial policy in order to uh, create circumstances for rebirth of high-tech production, education, science in our country, rebirth of material production, first of all, very important task. Second, socialization of education, healthcare, and culture. We have terrible trends of commercialization and privatization of social uh, spheres, and uh, socialization of these spheres, debureaucratization and decommercialization, free of charge education and healthcare, is very important point, and it is one of the main points of Grudinian. Redistribution of wealth, uh, decline of inequality through progressive income tax and so on, also very important point, and I completely agree with this idea. He has also some points uh, to support a more democratic political system. It is one of the paradoxes. Stalinist Communist Party of Russian Federation is tending for more democracy in political sphere for modern Russia. But uh, it's true, Communist Party of Russian Federation, and Grudin in particular, has uh, slogans of uh, bigger power of parliament, uh, impossibility to use money for political struggle, uh, more freedom of uh, speech, and so on and so forth. And uh, what kind of support will he garner, garner in this election? It's difficult to say because, first of all, uh, we have, as I said, uh, very unequal uh, opportunities for different candidates. And uh, Grudinian has very unfavorable conditions for, had and has uh, unfavorable conditions for his electoral campaign. 
so uh, his real popularity is uh, much bigger than the results which will be. Uh, second, I don't know how votes will be calculated. Uh, in Russia, it's very, I would say, popular proverb from Stalin's period. It doesn't matter how people vote, it doesn't matter how votes are calculated. So I hope that results will not be falsified. There will be no big falsifications, but uh, let's uh, see. Uh, and finally, uh, many people are not very satisfied with Grudinin himself as personality, but this is last uh, point from my point of view, not important point from my point of view, but for many people, personal uh, strong behavior, image and so on is important. And Grudinin was not very decisive guy during electoral campaign, so it can be also a negative factor. I hope he has up to 20% of votes, and according to real popularity of less slogans, he can have much more. But, as I said, the circumstances are not favorable for opposition. Alexander Brzezgalin, I uh, wish you and uh, everyone in Russia all the best in the upcoming election on Sunday. Um, and I hope that democracy prevails. Thank you, and I hope we will be in contact after elections and we will discuss the results a little later. Absolutely. You'll have that opportunity. I thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Goodbye. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.